Let's get on quickly into, today I want to speak on something I've titled grace for your next level. Somebody say grace for your next level. Shout it like you mean it. Say grace for my next level. How many of you feel that God is about to shoot you to your next level? God is going to make abundant grace sufficient for you to move to your next level. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4 verses 16. Hebrews 4 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 16. Hebrews 4 16. And let us read in agreement. One go. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of Somebody say the throne of grace. Shout it. Say the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. Somebody shout mercy. When you say God says let us boldly come to the throne of grace where we obtain mercy. Somebody shout mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Powerful scripture. Now, let's say, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. When you first come to the throne of grace, the first thing God says he gives you for free is mercy. Somebody say mercy. Immediately you enter this auditorium, God automatically released mercy on every one of us. And then after he has given you mercy, he says you find grace. He says we may obtain mercy and then find what? Look at the scripture. Find what? Grace to do what? To help you in time of need. I want you to follow me with the scripture as, as we, we go. Amen? Sorry. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me take it again. Continue from the part, the part B. Part B. Part B of the same scripture. Hebrews 4, 6. Yes. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of, in time of what? In time of what? In time of what? In time of what? Now, skip to the previous verse and then let me say something there before we come here. The previous verse, verse 14, verse 15. Says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all, but was in all points tempted and yet without sin. So the scripture, the writer of Hebrews is just telling us that we have a high priest that understands even our frailties. We have a high priest that even understands our frailties and so when it is time for you to be in the house of God he says verse 16 he says come boldly somebody say come boldly say come boldly and what is he says when you come boldly here the first thing he gives you is mercy what is mercy mercy is defined as exemption from judgment immediately you entered this auditorium, God decided to wipe away all judgments that was leveled against you. Somebody say mercy. Let me tell you, if not for the mercy of God, none of us will qualify for anything from God. Because th th there is none here that can match up even to the expected righteousness. The Bible says even our own righteousness is like filthy rocks before God. So immediately we enter into the auditorium. God decides to release mercy. He says, you know what? David, I've exempted you from judgment. Mary, I've exempted you from judgment. Diana, I've exempted you. So you are now qualified to receive grace to help you. Now, what is grace? We define grace as the unmerited favor of God. In other words, something you didn't work for, something you didn't merit, God decides to give you. He chooses by his own sovereignty to give you something that you don't even deserve. Why? Before him to do that, he says, first, I will give you mercy. After I have released mercy on you, then now I give you what you don't even deserve. 
Are you hearing me? You say, let me tell you, there are people in, who are your classmates who were more intelligent than you in school. There are people who, 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 are, who were intelligent than you in school, but if you compare yourself to them right now, though we are not supposed to, you can see that God has blessed you. There are people who, some, for one reason or the other, you thought they would, they would even be ahead of you, but somehow, just by the grace and the mercies of God, God has lifted you above even your own expectation. Somebody say, oh Lord, thank you for your grace. That every single thing we receive in this kingdom is a matter of grace. He chooses to give us. The book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4, 7, Apostle Paul says, what do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why are you acting as if you did not receive it? Every single thing we own, we have, everything that we are, God just chose to give us. And today I am here to tell you, he is about to give you the next grace for your next level. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. And my own definition for grace is this, and that is what I want you to know. Grace is when the ability of God superimposes your inabilities. When the ability of God superimposes your inabilities. Somebody shout grace. What do I mean? Where you say, I, I can't do this. But God says, I want to release power over you to make it possible for you to do it. When God's ability, God's strength comes upon you to do the things naturally you would not have been able to do. Can I have my chair? Let me just demonstrate something. Please. Quickly, please. I like to preach with demonstration so that if you forget the message, at least you remember the picture. Now, let's say, let's say, then it's done here. Let's say you want to do, you, I want to lift this. And by my own natural strength, I can't lift it. I've been trying, struggling to make it happen. It's not happening. And now, 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 this is what grace does. Grace comes to help you in as much as by your own ability and power, you can't do it. Grace is, I will lift it for you. So, in a, it looks like I am the one lifting it, but it is who? Grace that is lifting it. It looks like you are the one getting that job, but who? It is grace that made that job possible. It looks like you are the one that got that marriage. No, no, no. It is grace that made that marriage possible. It looks like you are succeeding in business because you are intellectually um, astute and you've got good business skills. No, it is grace that is making it possible. By your own strength, you can't do it. But grace says, I step in and make it possible. This morning, I pray for you. Every area of your life that you need grace to come in, I release grace over your life. 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 On the job, receive grace. In your marriage, receive grace. In ministry, receive grace. In every aspect of your life, I prophesy by the mandate of the Holy Ghost that grace is being released this morning in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout grace. When you can't do it, grace does it. It is not you. God superimposes his abilities on you and make it possible. And somebody says, ah, man of God, are you, are you sure I qualify for grace? No, you qualify for grace. Why? Because he has already released mercy over you. Everybody here qualifies for the unmerited favor, unmerited approval, unmerited endorsement of God. Why? Because grace is available. And mercy has spoken over already on your behalf. Grace is when God releases someone to solve your problems. Somebody say grace. Shout say grace. Shout grace. Thank you. Somebody say grace. 
Grace is when God releases someone into your life to solve your problems. Grace is a man. Jesus is grace. In John chapter 5, the man that was at the pool of Bethsaida had been there. Uh, they call it the pool of mercy. And in the actually original Hebrew is the pool of grace. And, and the man had been there for 38 year, years. And guess what? He was re- hoping for protocol to be followed for him to get a miracle. And Jesus stepped in and says, I am here as a man of grace to activate your healing even before time. I pray for someone this morning. Anything that has stored and looks like it was not working, may grace abound unto you this morning. If you are here, shout, I receive that. What is grace? Grace is when God qualifies you for the things you don't qualify for. God chooses to qualify you for things you don't even deserve. If you really look at yourself very well, some of the things that has happened to you, you didn't deserve it. You never qualified for them. But God just chose to release grace and make it happen for you. Somebody say, oh Lord, I receive grace. When God chooses to qualify you, I mean, what proves, what, 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 I mean, if you were to be put on the same platform where you are now and somebody else, you realize other people may be better than you, but God just chose to give you grace and qualify you for that job, qualify you for that position. Huh? If you had ever been for an interview, you were not the only candidate for your information. There were other candidates possibly better than you, but somehow, my God, grace spoke on your behalf. Ah, today I pray, everywhere you need grace, I command grace to speak on your behalf. If you are here, shout, I receive it. In every, even the man you think you are married to, do you think you are the only one? No, I always say, if you're a single lady, me, me, I say it confidently. Before I married my wife, there was my wife, and then there was, an, I was checking who would qualify for the position. <laughs> Somebody say grace. grace. Yes, because you, you are checking who will qualify. I mean, sometimes you pretend you are angry, even when you are not angry. When you realize that one is winning the battle, you have to find a way. Somebody say mercy. Listen, when the grace of God comes upon your life, what you don't qualify for, God qualifies you. Yeah. And today there are some things maybe you don't, you thought you would never get it. There are some breakthroughs, some, some jobs you thought you could never get. Today, the grace on this altar is speaking for you. Yeah. It's not going to be by your strength, by your skill, by your, by your, um, 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 and then the connections you have, God will just choose to give you grace. You see, the positions and the platforms of life is not for the best, it's for the greatest. You, you didn't hear what I said? The positions of life and the platforms of life and the higher pedestals in life is not for the best and the intelligent, it's for the greatest, the one that carry grace. In this life, there are people who are not good enough, but they have grace. Most of you, 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 you normally say it without understanding. Oh, I, I need grace. I, I, I mean, when you are in a difficult moment, say, I, I need grace. I need grace. Do you know what you are trying to say? Imagine the chair I was talking about. You can't lift it, but you want God to come and lift it for you. You can't do it, but you want God to come and empower you to make it happen. And, and we normally say this, oh, this man has got grace for this. This preacher has got, Ben, he has got grace for healing. He has got grace for this. It is all that we are just trying to say. They carry a unique ability. To make things happen easily without struggle. Are you getting me? There is a unique ability that he carries. That when he steps into an auditorium, healings just begin to happen. Well, he carries grace for that. There is a, you see, this ministry, one thing that I have come to understand, Bishop, people, are, there is grace here for lifting. Somebody say lifting. Because there are people I knew, eh? Even the past few years I've been around. And how God has lifted them. Somebody say there is grace here. I'm telling you. And there are some people. When you hear their stories. Where they were. And where God has brought them now. You will know. This this grace in this place is working. I'm telling you. 
You see, you see, Ben is my friend, and he normally drives me around. I mean, he, 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 he said when he came to church here in HOG, even his net salary could not pay tight. It was not enough for tight. Are you getting what it means? Then after they have deducted everything, it was not even enough for tight. But now see God. Somebody say, see God. See God. See how God has lifted him and shifted his life. Lifted him to the highest, even in the banking industry. May God lift you like that. Um, where, where is, um, I mean, I, I, I saw Dr. Rose post something on, on social media the other day. And, and how even when he came into church, he came to HOG. Bishop says, no children. She was trying to find a way in life. Nothing. Where's Dr. Rose? Oh, okay, okay, okay. She, she, she had nothing, she says. But guess what? As we speak, the grace in here, she's now a PhD holder in economics. A professor in the university. Who told you grace is not working? Somebody shout, it is working. There is grace here. Two children, nice house. And you say it's not working. I wanted Burari's picture when he came here, but I couldn't find one. <laughs> I guess it would have been something else. Grace is working. Somebody say grace is working. <laughs> and Dorothy, when she came here, she, when she came to church, she was in high school. Now she's a professor at Daystar. Who told you grace is not working? Can I prophesy over you? The same grace upon the man of God. The same grace that is in this altar. And the same grace upon my life. I declare let it work for you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shout it is working. It is working. It is working. It is working. I mean, every one of you, if we are to point, you have a testimony. Dogs in the church. Every one of you. Sir, where were you? Tell us something. I mean, everybody has something to say. So, so this is the time for us to let the world know the grace here is working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Put your hands together for Jesus. And that's what I'm telling you. It is something you can't explain. It is something you can't understand. It is just that it is grace that is working. God has chosen to minister to this church in that way. Whether you like it or not, it is God. You, you can't question him. Because sometimes if God, if God should ask me why he should bless you, I can give God 101 reasons why he shouldn't. But God chooses his sovereign all by himself. Yes. He chooses to bless you who he wants to bless. And that, that is why you can't understand the doctrine of grace and, the, and, 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 and grace because God chooses to do what he wants at the time he wants it. And I pray for you. As you stay here, may the grace in this place begin to work for you. I said, may it begin to work for you. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 9, give me Romans 9, 15 to 16, quickly. Apostle Paul says, God says, I will have compassion on whom I want to have compassion. And I will have mercy on whom I want to have mercy. For he says to Moses, he says to HOG, I will have mercy. Now, remove mercy and put exemption from judgment. In other words, God says, I will exempt from judgment who I want to exempt from judgment. My God, what a scripture. I, God, I choose to exempt from judgment. Who I want to exempt from judgment. And he says, and I will have compassion on whom I want to have compassion. In this COVID, people have died, but you are here. Kalibi Azuta, in Mazua Alibriantos, you were supposed to have been dead and gone, but guess what? You are here, others are dead. He chose to have mercy on your life. He chose to have favor on your life. He chose to have compassion. No, are you telling me the people that died out of COVID, you are more holier than them? No way! But God just chose. I will keep David. 
I'll keep Musioka. Ah, go to shows. Some of you even had COVID. You are out of COVID. You are still here. My God. Somebody say grace. Others had it. They died. You had it. Ay, 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 ay. I prophesy over your life. May grace continue to work for you. May grace continue to work for you. May grace continue to work for you. If you are here, shout I receive. Sadly enough, if we are to put on platform as a matter of works, some of the people that died, they were, they were better than us. Some of the people, they pray, oh, they, they are holy, oh. Yeah. But God chose David. Regardless, I will keep you alive. Somebody shall grace. It is not a matter of what you have. It's not a matter of what you have done. He just chooses by his own might and power to give you grace. On this altar, I prophesy, let grace begin to work for you. It shall not be by your might. It shall not be by your strength. It shall not be by your ability. May the grace of God begin to work for you. Somebody shall grace. See, if you put Jacob and Esau on platform, according to the law, Esau is the firstborn. If you check the history of Jacob, the guy was a lazy boy. He was in the tent. The Bible says Jacob was a dweller in tents. He was always at home. <laughs> life is no fair. This life. <laughs> Jacob was. The Bible said Jacob was living in tents. And the brother was who always go out to go and look for meat and bring to the house. The guy was working hard. Esau was working hard. And guess what? My God. Genesis chapter 27. When, when, when the Bible says that, that, that the time came for the father to bless Esau, he called me and said, Esau, go and prepare me game. And, and get, go out, get some game, prepare me food, and after I will eat and I will bless you. And Rebecca heard, he says, Lalai, it's not happening. When you have a mother that loves you, it's a good thing. Rebecca says, it's not happening. Uh, he, Rebecca says to Jacob, I will prepare venison for you such as your father loves and then you will take it to him. Now, give me that shot. Now, now, quick, yes, sir. Now, uh, put it up. Cut, cut on it. Like, now, thank you, thank you. Now, he says, I will prepare venison for you and then I will put the skin of the lamb on your skin. So when you go and your father feels your skin, your father will think it is Esau. Now, logically, this man had lived with these two boys for over 20 years. Some of you, your relatives, you have not seen them for 10 years. You are in Australia, very far. But when they call you, you still be able to tell that this is the voice of my sister. Right? So Jacob, Isaac cannot tell me. He could not tell that this is the voice of Jacob. When Jacob prepared the food, Genesis 27 verse 19, give me scripture. Now, Jacob prepared the food. Now, and Jacob said to, let me go to verse 19. Now, when, when Isaac, when Jacob brought the food to his father, listen to what Jacob says. Remember, he is not Esau. Let's read one go. And Jacob said to his father, no, no, he, say, he says to his father, he's what? Now, what is all this? No, no, I'm surely. Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. Really? And it is in scripture. They didn't put it out. Oh my God. I wish I could preach something here. It, it, it is in scripture. Jacob said to his father, and hey, guess what? I'm top of this lie. The guy got the blessing. What are you talking about? Somebody shout grace. <laughs> I don't want to say some things. <laughs> How many of you read Psalm 23? All the Psalms, most of the Psalms in the Bible. Half of the Psalms was written by David. You love it. It's spiritual. It's powerful. You have never taken that part of the scripture out. Have you taken your Bible and told the Psalms that David wrote? No. You still read it, and you still feel it's powerful. And you, wrote, you read um, 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel 11, 12, where David committed something wrong. The, and all those two are in scripture. Nobody has taken that part where David sinned out of scripture. 
and nobody has taken the Psalms out of scripture. We still say it is a part of the Holy. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Somebody shout grace. See, the things of God, the Bible said the ways of God are not our ways. And the thoughts of God are not our thoughts. So some things you can't understand God. So if you try to question, process it with your cognitive ability, it will not make sense. But it, it, it is grace. He chooses to do what he wants. Somebody shall grace. May grace speak for you. Some of you, the things you do in your offices, the numbers you are, the zeros you are, the things you deduct, and you come and you lift, you lift up holy hands as if you are perfect than anybody. The devil is a liar. Hey! Hey! Somebody shall grace. We all need grace, man. You see, and, and they pretend like, you know, Father, we love you. Father, we The day you lift up your voice to criticize somebody, God will look at this, look at this one. God will look at you and say, look at this one. Hey. Now, let's go to scripture. Let's go. Let's go. That was commercial break. Let's go. <laughs> let's go to scripture. Now he says, but Isaac said to, um, 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 uh, take me back, take me back, verse 19. But Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Did he tell you? Please arise. Sit, eat of my game that your soul may bless me. <laughs> this boy. This Jacob. And you know, from Jacob we had what? Israel. Hey. Israel. This is what Israel started doing. Oh. Next verse. Verse 20. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God, oh my God. <laughs> because the Lord your God brought it to me. Hey. Hey. Jacob. Next verse. Isaac said to Jacob, please come near that I may feel you. My son, whether you are really my son is so or not. Now, this is what I want you to catch a revelation here. Now, next verse. So, Jacob went near to his father Isaac, and he felt him and said, now, let's assume this is Jacob. Now, he says, and Jacob went near to his father Isaac, and he felt it. He said, the voice is the voice of what? It's Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of who? Now, I want you to catch a revelation here. Jacob had a covering. Somebody say, a covering. So, Isaac felt the covering. You should touch my covering. So, the voice disqualifies Jacob, but the covering qualifies Jacob. The voice is the voice of Jacob. The voice does not give him the blessing, but the covering qualifies him for the blessing. It's not about what prayer you have made. It is not about what work you have done. Yes, Jacob brought the food, but it's about the covering that is upon your life that is speaking for you. You tell me you pray. You, you pray. You. Which prayer? Which pra See, some of the things that has happened to you here, it's not because you pray hard. It's because you have a strong covering. What made the guy got this blessing? His voice, he says, this is Jacob's. He said, the voice is Jacob's voice. In other words, Jacob, you are not the one for the blessing. But the covering are the hands of Esau. Let me tell you something. Never let anybody talk you out of your covering. Never. 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 You can't talk me out of my covering. You can't. It doesn't matter what, what happens between me and my spiritual father. You can't talk me out of my covering. The other day I said it here. When somebody tells me, hey David, I saw your spiritual father smoke, smoking weed. Weed was coming out of his mouth. This is what I'll tell you. My spiritual father prays so much that when he prays, smoke will be coming out of his mouth. What are you talking about? 
Trust me out of what? See, because when you come to the place of understanding, some of the things you have is about the grace that covers you. You understand the value of a covering. Who speaks over your life? Who covers you? And some of you, you have advanced because of this ministry. You have done great things because of this ministry. And you have the audacity to say, I'm quitting for where? Somebody say mercy. mercy. Shout mercy. mercy. So Esau received, um, Jacob received the blessing because of the covering that he had. And guess what? The fathers gave him the blessing. He, Jacob, I mean, um, Jacob couldn't tell, I mean, uh, Isaac could not tell me, he could not tell the voice. You know the voice. He said, this is Jacob's voice. But now, I am giving you the blessing because you have decided to come under a covering that qualifies you for the blessing. And he blessed him. And he blessed him. And he blessed him. And he blessed him. And he said all sorts of things. When you come to Genesis chapter 32 verse 10, when Jacob, when Jacob left his father's house right after this blessing with a stake because he was afraid to be killed, he left with a stake like this. Jacob chapter 32 verse 10. He says, I left... He says, um, um, thank you. He says, I am not worthy of the list of the mercies and all the truth which you have shown me, your servant. I cross this Jacob with what? With my what? With my staff, which was a stake those days. And I have become to come. By the time Jacob was coming back from exile, he had so much possession. Silver, gold, cattle. He has two companies. People were ahead of him. He had servants. He had children, wives. Things were happening. Why? Because a voice spoke over him. I speak over you today. I connect my anointing with the anointing of the bishop of the house. And I decree and declare. Every place you desire to go. Everything that is upon your heart. I command let grace begin to speak for you. 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 Speak for you. If you are here shout I receive it. Many people sometimes think that, I mean, because of the challenges you are going through, grace can't speak. Somebody say grace will speak regardless. It will speak. When grace is speaking over your life, I mean, it beats the natural process and logic of man. Look at Joseph. His brothers thought they were going to finish him. I mean, completely kill him, destroy his future just because he had a dream. He had a vision. He saw, he had a dream and he saw the moon and the stars bowing down to him and he told his brothers. And, and the Bible says in, in, in chapter Genesis 37 verse 20 that when they saw Jacob, Joseph coming from afar, they conspired to kill him. And even in the midst of conspiracy to kill Jacob, it, and it landed him in Egypt. In all the midst of it, somehow God was working with Joseph. God was working with Joseph. God, in the midst of it, when his brothers even conspired to finish him, grace was still speaking. Grace was speaking. In fact, in, 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 thank you, Holy Spirit. A scripture just dropped in my spirit. When, 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 when Joseph entered into Potiphar's house, give me Genesis chapter 39, verse, verse 5. I mean, um, um, if you have the NIV version, I'll be very glad. Otherwise, give me New King James. Genesis 39, verse 5. Now, Let's read. Let's read. Thank you. So everybody, let's read on the top of your voice. One go. Uh -huh. Now, let's look at it. He says, it was so. So it was. From the time that he made that his Potiphar made Joseph overseer of all his house, all that he had. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house, not because of the Egyptian, because of Joseph. The Lord, let me paraphrase it. The Lord blessed Elder Lucy because of David Murid. Are you getting the revelation? The Lord blessed the Egyptian because for the sake of Joseph. 
Not because God wanted to bless the Egyptian. No, no, no. But because there was a connection. The one thing the devil can do to mess your life anytime is to break your connection with the right man. Once he succeeds in doing that, he knows you are finished. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The NIV says because of Joseph. Because God wanted to. The Lord bless Elder Lucy because of Bishop David Murray. The Lord bless you because of the man of God. And in the midst of it all, there was a shift. Every plot and plan eventually landed Joseph even into the house of the prime minister, the position of a prime minister. Can I tell you something? In the midst of every chaos, in the midst of every confusion, may God use that same issue that the enemy will bring to you to lift you to your next level. Did you hear what I said? When they plotted to kill Joseph, they plotted all the things. Eventually, Joseph landed even in prison. But guess what? Even in the prison, God used someone in the prison to lift him to the place of a prime minister. Every affliction you are going through today, I command grace to speak for you. I declare you are coming out bigger. You are coming out better. You are coming out stronger. In the name of Jesus. Imagine your brothers conspiring at the end, making sure you are in jail. In Genesis 50, verse 50, chapter 50, verse 20, Jacob said, Joseph, Joseph said something profound. He said, Joseph said, that you people meant it for evil. But God, Halima Haziah, he said, but as for you, you meant it for evil against me. But God meant it for what? Every affliction that shall come your way. May God work it together for your good. I said, may God work it together for your good. I decree and prophesy. As a prophet of God, may God control the times and the seasons. And lift this ministry to the next level. Lift this place to the next level. Lift you to the next level. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every pain you are going through. Every frustration you are going through. Every attack you are going through. I prophesy over your life. In the name of Jesus, may God use it as a platform to lift you to your next level. I know there are some people who are in pain, going through difficult secret pain, but I pray for you today. God sent me all the way from UK to declare over your life. That pain will lift you to your next level. That affliction will lift you to your next level. That frustration will lift you to your next level. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Get ready for a shoot. In the name of Jesus, it's about time the devil got to know that we serve a living God. We don't serve a dead God. Ah, he's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. Halima Asata, I prophesy over your life, your family, your job, your ministry, your business. May God lift it to the next level. May God lift it to the next level. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Apostle Paul says something very profound. He says, our light affliction, which is bad for a moment. He does not deny that there is an affliction. He says, for, shall we read one go, everyone shout at the top of your voice. For our light affliction, which is bad for a moment, is working for us. Hold it there. He says, the affliction is bad. It is for what? The affliction is working for us. The pain is working for you. The dismissal is working for you. Halima attack. The, the, that attack you are going through, he says, is working. It, it's not you that is doing it. The same thing the enemy thought he was bringing to attack you. It is working for you. Halima attack. For, for an exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I don't know who has been through some attacks right here. I don't know whose business is down. Maybe you are down in life. Shut down 
all broken, destroyed by the enemy. The other day, Mika said, do not rejoice over me, oh my enemy. For when I fall, I shall rise. When I fall, I shall rise. When I fall, I shall rise. I prophesy. May you rise again. I said, may you rise again. I said, may you rise again. I said, may you rise again. You are rising in career. You are rising in business. You are rising in ministry. In the way the enemy made you fall. I speak as a prophet. And I decree and declare. You are rising again. You are rising again. You are rising again. Shout, I'm rising. The Bible said the righteous man falleth seven times. And seven times, he didn't say uh, two times, seven times. He shall rise. I prophesy. If the scripture says when we fall, that is the end of our lives. That would have been it. He says when we fall, not once, not twice. Do you know the meaning of seven times? That means even a complete fall, finished, still, you will rise. Still, you will rise. Still, somebody shout, I'm rising. Shout, my business is rising. My ministry is rising. My career is rising. My job, me, my career, I'm rising. In every aspect of my life, I am rising. We are rising as a church. I said, We are rising. 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 We are. Somebody shout. Rising. In the name of Jesus. And the devil can do nothing about it. I was supposed to say. See. That scripture. Uh, 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 Bishop was talking to me about it. Romans 8.28. He says. All things. Will work together. For my good. You see that word. Work together. That phrase work together. Is a is the Greek word synergy. If you have done management and business management, or done HR, the word synergy simply is defined as one plus one is equal to three. In other words, after everything else you have been through put together, the resultant effect will be greater, far greater than everything else that you went through. After everything else is finished, what God will do for you, it shall be bigger. It shall be greater. It shall be mind blowing. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Grace is about to speak for you. I said, Grace is about to speak for you. I said, Grace is about to speak for you. Grace is about to lift you. God is about to elevate you to your place of honor. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. Grace. Somebody shout, Grace. Sound it like you really say grace. Shout it, say grace. It's working for me. Shout it, say grace. It's working for me. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Be upstanding. When you stand up psychologically, I know like I'm done. Be upstanding. We want to pray. See, one thing I do best is to pray. Amen. Yes. Now listen to me very well. To connect with grace, number one. Peter said, Apostle Peter said, grow in the knowledge of the word. Says, as you grow in grace, you grow, as you grow in the knowledge of God, so you grow in grace. Connect to the word. Don't, don't be somebody telling you another doctrine. Know God for yourself. Are you hearing me? You didn't hear what I said? Know God for yourself. No, that, I mean, anything you just follow, you just buy into. No, 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 no. You are stunned. You are grounded. You know God. You know the scripture for yourself. Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4, 16 to 17, he says, I, I, am, I, I, I have given, um, God has given apostles, prophets, teachers, whatever, for the equipping of the same, for the work of the ministry. He says, so that you will not be babies in Christ. You will know. You will not be tossed to and fro. Today you hear this, you follow. No, no, no. You are grounded. Shout, I'm grounded. The Bible said, those that are planted in the house of the Lord, Psalm 92 verse 10, they shall flourish in the course of our God. For you to flourish, you've got to be planted. Where are you planted? We want to pray. We are taking four prayer points. Because we need to clear the atmosphere and command the heavens to take over. We command the kingdom of God to reign and the kingdom of darkness to be subdued. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We decree and declare. 
the grace of God is speaking for us. The grace of God is speaking for us. We declare grace to speak on our behalf. Grace to speak. Come on, lift up your voice. Declare that grace speak. La ko shali abahaya. Rabalo shete limi anta. Rante telia ako shala bahaya. Rapalia azolo lo bokapa. Hateli azua ante. Hetelia kalolo bo shabrante. Alua azelele bokapaya. Hapandia azote abaha. Rababo shelele bo shabanta. Rante telia azua. Father, let grace speak for us. Even when we don't qualify, let your grace speak. Ima Shetea, a palili azota, a brando asimini mi capa, a brante telia capahaya, a palia azolo lobo shote, i caprante azunimia, a palia azolo lobo capa, a panda basua antetea, a pala palia capanda da basaya, a palia atala la bosa bantaya, randa da bacosua andea, a pala la bosa ta, father let grace speak for us. Let grace speak for the ministry. Let grace speak for HOT. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Mato Sete. In Kalala Bosa Branta. Rapa Lesi Biantaya. Rapa Palia Atoa. We command the grace of God to be released in abundance like never before. On this altar. In this house. In the name of Jesus. In Kalesete. In Palibi Asota. A Brande de Bocosa. A Palia Asolo. Ela la basuate, libi a paliato, a pala la bacosa te, raba balonia, a pala la baconia ante, et la 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 We decree and declare, let the grace of God begin to speak. Let the grace of God begin to speak. Hapala bo shadea, himantoni mi azia. Hapala la la la, rante abahaya. Rapa papa, rapa papa, rapa papa, rapa papa, rapa papa, rapa papa. Imalo sete, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Why do you, you have a problem with Jesus? Does Jesus have a problem with you? If we don't, if, they, if you don't have a problem with him, and he does, so shout it like you mean. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. Let grace, grace speak for me. Speak for me. Say I declare. I declare. Let grace. Let grace speak for me. Speak for me. If you forget everything, never forget the demonstration. When you feel like you want to do something and you can't, your CV can help you. Your connections can help you. Your, your experience on the job can't make it. Your, your, the qualifications for that tender says you don't get it. But guess what? Grace will lift it for you. You want to speak grace over your life. Where you can't do it, let grace speak. Not you, but grace. Where, where, where you, your strength gets to an end, let grace begin to speak. Lift up your voice. Come on, begin to declare. Father, let your grace speak for me in every aspect of my life. Lift up your voice. Hey, let grace speak in the name of Jesus. Me Anton the Apaya. Rapapala Branda Bakoshaba. Rapapala Broshaba. 
Rapapalia Azono Rosa, Mi Antoli Mikapa, Rapapali Mi Antaya, Etalala, Abrando Sabatea, Hikala La Bosa, Rabacolia Atea, let a grace of God begin to speak on our behalf, Ato Satea, Ila Brando Scabahaya, Apalia Azuli Mikapa, Mazote Lelehea, Abrana Namakosa. We speak grace on the altar, grace in the church, grace in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Let grace speak on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Listen, I said to you to connect with grace, delve deeper in the world. The next thing that can make grace locate you is to connect with the man of grace. Genesis chapter 12. The day I got the revelation in that scripture, my life changed. God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, he says, leave your father's house, whatever, whatever. And he says, say now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house and to a land I will show you. Next verse. Yet the scripture very well. And he says, I will make you great. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be now, verse 3. Listen to verse 3. says, I will bless those who bless you. Now watch this. That's it. God says, you Abraham, anybody that chooses to bless you, I God, I will bless you. So, if I want God to bless me, and this is a man of grace, I bless him, and God bless me. No, you are not catching the revelation. Don't go about looking for blessing. Identify a man that carry blessing, my God. Bless him, and the blessing will come upon you. Says, I will bless those who bless you. And a man that cares you, I God, I will curse. You want to You are telling the Lord, Father, never let me depart from my man of grace. And help me to bring more men of grace in my life. The person, see, God can release one person into your life. All your problems will be solved. I've seen it. One person can cancel 10 prayer requests. Did you hear what I said? 10 prayer requests. One, two, three. One man, God releases and all those prayer requests are dealt with. Say, oh Lord, release my man of grace. And never let me depart from my man of grace. Say, oh Lord, release my man of grace. Never let me depart. Come on, lift up your voice. Kalabasole behaya. Rapali azolele kapa. Halia azote. Mi akali azoni mi antaya. Rapapala bakoshaba. Rapala boshate. Ila kosha. Habranti mini mi kapa. Matoli me asata. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to declare. Father, release. Father, release. Father, release. Father, release. Father, release. We decree and declare. We shall never disconnect from a man of grace. We come against every evil voices that will torment us, frustrate us to a place of disconnection. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hold on, listen to me. Listen to this, and then we pray. Anytime God wants to bless you, 
he releases a man. And when the devil wants to attack you, the devil also releases another person. That is how life is. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son came and he went back. God the Spirit is here. Every blessing you need is with someone. Every blessing. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the people that are connected to you. So when a quality person is with you and the devil manages to disconnect you, you are finished. You want to make this prayer. I want us to pray for the church, the body of Christ, the church global. We are declaring that God, see, I want you to have a mindset that me, I am for God. Say, I am for God. I am for the kingdom. I am a kingdom personality. I've got a kingdom mindset. Anything against the kingdom, I'm not for it. You are declaring in the name of Jesus that God would elevate the body of Christ in this nation. That the church of God in Kenya will be elevated. That the church of God in Kenya will be lifted. That the banner of Christ shall be raised up high to the glory of God. We are speaking over the body of Christ in this nation. And you are saying, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hate shall not prevail against the church. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to pray for the body of Christ. Speak grace over the churches. Speak grace over the churches. Come on, begin to pray. In the church you can mention, mention the house of grace, mention in the church that will come into your mind. Come on, begin to declare. Speak and declare over the body of Christ. Kalabosha. Lele bo shata, aliya makoshe telele. Lele bo shata ni bi hamaya. Rapa pala makoshe taya. Etele lele bo shabranta. Atele koshe ba. Rapa pali ya kabranta taya. Etele lele lele bo shapaya. Rapa ni bi asoli ya kapa. Rapa li ya asolo lo bo kapa ya. Etele lele lele ya brante. Etele ya asolo lo bo kapa. Ipala asolo lo bo kapa. Ranta telia asunimi ante ya Epelelele zakanda We decree to the four walls Of the church of Kenya That it shall be built And the gates of haze Shall not prevail against the church Rebuild the church The church will stand and soldier on In the name of Jesus Ikala bahaya Rababako sheteya Elele bo shabrante Epelelele kapaha Rababako Brandana Masata, Etelia Atoloa, Papa Palua Athea, Etelele Cabranta, Rapa Pala Basoa, Ita Talia Mamacose, E Masunimi Antaya, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Just want to worship God for two minutes. Mighty men of war. I want just worship God for two minutes. Judah. Worship God in this house for two minutes and then I'll be out of your way. Come on, worship you. Lift up your God and worship him.
God saying is that let the mighty man of war do that only which he can do. It's not about you. That grace will do it for you. That God will step in in the midst of the situation. Bishop had not accepted the call of God, maybe I will not be here. This church will not have been here. Believe it or not. We want to pray for the church. We want to pray for the man of God. That may grace abound in exceeding man. That God increase him. God empower him. God preserve him. Because if not for him, we will not be here. Maybe some of you, you have never met me. want to speak and release grace in abundance over this church over the bishop, over the wife over the family, we are commanding grace to be multiplied lift up your voice and come on pray lift up your voice, come on begin to speak every single one of you, come on begin to lift up your voice, begin to lift up your voice, begin to lift up your voice we release grace in abundance over your man servant oh God, we pray oh God, may you multiply grace over his life, over his family we decree and declare preservation of life, preservation of ministry, in the name of Jesus, we command abundance of grace, abundance of prosperity, abundance of favor, to be multiplied over his life right here right now, in the name of Jesus, Ikalo Zimi Alaya, Apali Azolele Kapa, Rapandi Atose, Ei Makoli Apapa, Elele Bo Shabahaya, Apandi Akolo Azie Kelehe, Ebrente Telia Babasoa, Apala Labasote Apaya, Apala Labrante Telia Azoa, Epele Pelia Azolo Lobo Kapa, Imalo Sasali Akapa, Rabababa, Alele. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, upon the Atose, Ipalala Bakosaya, in the name of Jesus. Hear me. God is telling me many people after today are going to experience grace in a way you have never believed. There is a release of the abundance of grace in this auditorium right now. And anybody that connected with an expectation, heaven is going to meet you at the point of your need. Everyone that is in career, you are in one office or the other, you are doing one business or the other, may abundance of grace be multiplied unto you. May it not be by your strength, by your skills, by your management and leadership skills, but may it be by the grace of God. May your competitors begin to wonder what is happening and you tell them it's the grace of God. Let the enemy know that grace is working for you. And it will continue to work for you.